I recently came across a guy called Joshua Furr, who in just one year went from being a freelance journalist with a terrible short-term memory to being the US memory champion, setting a new world record of memorizing a deck of shuffled cards in just one minute and 40 seconds. In his book, he explains that he achieved this using a simple technique called the method of Loki, also referred to as the mind or memory palace, which you may be familiar with from Sherlock Holmes. Like most people, I would love to be able to remember everything that I learn. So to test out this technique, I've set myself a challenge to try and memorize a hundred random objects in the right order as quickly as possible. But before I get started, what actually is a memory palace and why is it so effective? Humans are innately bad at remembering random information. The average person can only remember seven words or numbers at a time. However, we're good at remembering faces, stories, and our route home, as historically, these have been skills that were essential to our survival. The Memory Palace makes use of these skills by adding visual, spatial, and emotional context to the things we're trying to learn. To apply this method, the first step is to choose a building that you know very well. I'm gonna choose my house, but you could equally choose something like your school or maybe your place of work. The next step is to create vivid visual images that relate to what you need to remember. The more emotional and outrageous, the better. So let's use my surname as an example. You've got fish and whip, effectively two words. You could apply a fish to the fish, obviously, and then maybe a candle wick for the wick. To make it more interesting, you could combine the two and perhaps have a fish-shaped candle, or maybe even make it so that when the candle burns, it smells like fish. Next, choose a path and position the images in your home. You can start from anywhere, but you want to make sure that the path is as linear as possible so you're not doubling back over the same locations. And then once you've got all that, the final step is to memorize the palace that you've created. So now that I understand the theory, let's start the challenge. First, I need to get a list of 100 random objects. We'll make them unique. Now I'm gonna copy and paste all of these. Oh, let's make them a bit smaller than that. It's currently 9.35 in the morning. Let's see how long this will take to memorize them all. Okay, walk into the house and the radio is on. That's an easy one because the radio is always on in my house. The most challenging part of creating a memory palace is to consistently create unique visual images for each object in a way that it links to the next object. I roll a pair of dice to decide which tile to step on. I breezed through the first set of objects with relative ease, but as time went on, I found it more and more difficult to be creative. It also didn't help that I'd got the list of objects from an American website. Plush unicorn? What's a plush unicorn? Is that like a toy thing? Oh right, it's a stuffed toy. Apologies, Chelsea, for what I'm about to write. This is not a true reflection of your character. A dirty frying pan and an empty bottle of pills that sit beside the bed. I worry about her. After just over an hour of bashing away at the keyboard, I'd created my memory palace of objects, which meant that it was on to the next stage. Let's see how much I can remember just from the process of writing out the memory palace. I walk through the front door and the radio is on. The camera is rolling because I'm filming my challenge. A uh, cookie jar has been smashed on the floor, leaving a candy bar on the top to the cookie jar, which is a cork. I roll a dice to see which tile I should step onto and then I skip over a shoelace onto that tile and make my way towards the kitchen. I know there's something about clocks, but I don't know if that's next. There's melting clocks and glasses. There's some binoculars in there. Right, okay, let's check what I've done so far. So, I've remembered the first seven objects, but if you recall, this is no better than the average person. But that's a bit misleading. I could actually remember a lot more than seven, but I'd just forgotten the hook that leads me from the hallway into the kitchen. And don't forget that I haven't yet spent any time trying to actively memorize the objects. After I'd worked through the rest of the palace, referring to my notes only a dozen or so times, I gave it another go. Close the laptop lid. Walk into the house, the radio's on. Mum is beating eggs with an egg beater and Bella is beating a bracelet. I grab an empty bottle from the pantry and let the blood drip into it. And out jumps a plush rabbit that's listening to an MP3 player. Chelsea is watching Game of Thrones. She loves Jon Snow, who's a dirty crow. Do you know who else is dirty? Chelsea 
because there's a dirty frying pan and a bottle of pills next to her bed. She adds the finishing touches to her outfit, which is a green broccoli flavored lip gloss, a carrot orange pair of socks, and a belt made from leeks. I hear the car tires screeching outside. I run into mom's bedroom, put pillow over my ears and cut my hand on an empty tin can. The smell of the toilet stings my nose and so I put my hair back using a hair tie and retch. Oh my God, I might have actually just remembered it completely all in one go the second time. Let's, let me check. I did. Come on, yes. Which meant that after an hour of creating the memory palace and 15 minutes spent committing it to memory, I could recite a hundred random objects in order. I'm absolutely shocked that I managed to do it that quickly. I genuinely thought that this was gonna take me all day and potentially take me into the next day. That's still nothing compared to what they do in the US Memory Championships, where they have to remember 200 random words in the space of 15 minutes. But it does show that I think the technique does really work. I'm not sure it would actually be possible to remember 100 random objects without some kind of memory technique. Technique, technique. I'm back to the leaks again. Before I finish this challenge, I want to test out one more aspect of this technique. Research has shown that the average person will forget 50% of the information within one hour of learning it. So to declare this technique a success, I wanna make sure that I can still remember all of it a couple of hours after learning it. So I busied myself for two hours before I put on a blindfold and put the memory palace through one final test. Radio, camera, cookie jar, candy bar, cork, Dice, shoelace, egg beater, beaded bracelet, clock, glass, bottle of lotion, pair of binoculars, screw, empty bottle, toothpick, candle, rubber stamp, canvas, plush, unicorn, bangle bracelet, toothpaste, flag, quilt, thread, handful of change, spool of ribbon, matchbox, dagger, video games, carton of ice cream, bottle cap, speakers, egg, pack of cards, tire swing, shirt, pine cone, twister, candle, wine glass, scarf, plush, rabbit, mp3 player, coffee mug, canteen, sticks of incense, shirt button, plush, cat, bottle of soda, hand basket, conditioner, balloon, outlet, tube of lip balm, washcloth, pair of rubber gloves, crow, frying pan, bottle of pills, toy car, cowboy hat, Pearl necklace, lampshade, vase, television, miniature portrait, clothes, multi tool, magnifying glass. No. What? Uh -uh. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Mag mag before that. Oh, before that. Oh, before that, before that, before that. Clothes, multi tool, broccoli, lip gloss, pair of socks, belt, magnifying glass, paintbrush, white out, plastic fork. Rolling pin, slippers, TV, bottle of glue, glasses, eraser, bottle of honey, lemon, stocking, car, pillow, empty tin can, jar of pickles, teacup, car, magazine, toilet, piece of gum, box of baking soda, paintbrush, roll of toilet paper, spice bottle, and a hair tie. <laughs> Do I get it? <gasps> you, uh, yes. Uh, you did say candle with a candle kind of stick. 98.5% right. I'll take that. That's not bad. That's not bad with a two hour gap. <laughs> that That's pretty good, isn't That's it? That's so good. What do you mean by that? See? Technique works. That was actually quite fun as well. I was like transporting myself around the house. It's like, it's quite meditative. I would definitely recommend that you try out this technique for yourself. Here's a quick summary based on what I've learned today. The memory palace method makes it easier to recall information by adding visual, emotional and spatial context. To apply the method, first, choose a building that you can easily visualize. Second, create vivid visual images that relate to what you need to remember. The more outrageous and emotional, the better. Position the images in the building, choosing your path carefully. When order is important, the story and the links between each section are key. Finally, memorize the story using well-known study techniques such as recall, space repetition, and interference theory. Now, the technique is clearly useful for studying for exams, but is it useful in everyday life? Well, one example would be to use it for non-fiction books. 
I spend a lot of time writing and then rereading book notes in order to remember the key messages. Instead of this, I could create a few key images for each chapter and then put them into a memory palace. Over time, I'd end up with a whole city of memory palaces that I could call on in different situations. In the coming weeks and months, I'm going to try and apply the memory palace technique to my everyday life so we'll report back on its effectiveness at a later date. In case you're wondering, this approach can also be applied to numbers using a method called the major system. If you want to hear more about this technique, then let me know in the comments section below this video. If you enjoyed this, then you'll probably enjoy some of my other videos. Check them out using the links on your screen now. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.